So I think we are on now. Uh, so welcome everybody, finally. <laughs> um, after uh, uh, going through the reviews of differential equations, we are finally starting with the quantum stuff. But that's not the end of the math stuff. As you will see, there will be some other Hilbert space, the mathematics of Hilbert space <laughs> coming and then that's it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, for the time being, you know, it's a pleasure to have you all back. I see uh, familiar faces. And uh, yeah, I look forward to uh, to having you um, on this uh, journey in uh, discovering uh, you know the fascinating world of quantum hardware with our friend Carlos Bessa here. Without further ado, I will hand over to him. And uh, uh, Carlos, floor is yours. Okay, thank you, Mamoudi. Thank you, everyone, for to be here to follow the the. The, the course of the lectures. Um, and today, I mean, we have some prerequisite materials that you guys, I think you guys saw some, some lectures uh, about uh, differential equations. Everything that is there, but I mean, it would be important because, I mean, if this was something like, uh, a regular academic academic course. This would be would be for sure a prerequisite. So, uh, what I'm planning today, because as Bumblebee said, uh, we will have more math uh, before we really start talking about quantum computing. But uh, what I'm planning to, to to do today is give a more general idea in and uh, comment and talking about some topics that we will discuss uh, uh, during the course, I mean, the, the lectures. So, and the idea is like to, to, to present for you guys, like the, the topics that we will discuss, but before we need to, to have some other uh, mathematical backgrounds, the, the math that we, we really use, during the course. So only after that, I will show some math in, in future. So today we are just talking about the things that we will do. And basically no, 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 no math, quantum mechanics is math. I will show. And in the, I think in the end of the, the, the talk, Bombardier will say some, some words about the, what, what's coming like next about the, the, the math, the prerequisite math part. Okay. So uh, uh, the idea, so the idea today is like, uh, let me go here if it's better. Okay. Uh, the idea is like to to give an like, overview of the course more complete than in, in, we, we talk in the Q and A section. So, but I mean, as I told you guys. Today we, we will not see no math yet because I think uh, some prerequisites is still needed to at least I mean to most of the people follow. So so okay. So the the course as I, I said in the 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 Q and A section, we we are planning like to have introductory courses about quantum hardware and hard, uh, hardware models for quantum computation and the I put some some of them here, but this is the, the thing maybe for this year and next year to see all these models. And this first part of the course, we decided like, to talk about this tree here, which is are related in some sense, or the others are related to, but we decided like, uh, that these 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 models will be uh, best to for 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 start and and today I will talk a little bit with some more details what we will, we will do I mean what we will see uh, during the course and what the 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 basic is like prerequisites necessary so we in, in, during the course we intend like to go into details. I mean about this the the models and yeah, the math details the talk about the physics and try to understand uh, 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 the physics and the math 
the fury, the fury and the, I mean, the, the practical part of the, uh, the, the models we are treating. And, but to do this, uh, uh, it's necessary some, some knowledge, basically knowledge about quantum mechanics, especially because it's the, it's where the, the theory, uh, are based, I mean, quantum computing, you, you need quantum mechanics to understand at least not everything from quantum mechanics in a regular quantum mechanics course, but at least the basics of the math we need to understand better. And this will come in, in, in next, next weeks, I mean, not today. And some knowledge that I will also show during the course about quantum optics and quantum electrodynamics. It will be also necessary, right? Because we are talking here about optical models and a, a, a little bit of electrodynamics, quantum electrodynamics is also needed. So the first model we'll talk during the course will be the simple harmonic oscillator that, I mean, Uh, we will see that it is not a good, it's not a good, uh, it's not a good, not, it doesn't serve as a good quantum computer, but uh, the theory behind, from the pedagogical point of view, it can illustrate the, some concepts about quantum mechanics, like the energy quantization, discrete energy models, states, discrete energy states, and from the practical point of view, it has applications in different problems in modern physics, right? in condensed matter, and especially in quantum computing. So the, the, we'll see the, 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 this, the first model that we, so we will learn like how to quantize an harmonic oscillator and how to, after we understand uh, the physics and the theory behind it, we can apply for, for other models. Okay, so one, one of the other models is the optical quantum computing. In the optical quantum computing, this, because like optical models uh, uh, are used in different, in, in different uh, parts of the, the physics. So serial devices, uh, you need to understand a little, uh, a little of, uh, quantum optics. So it's the same for like uh, a quantum computing based on, on, on quantum optics. So uh, devices that we can use will be something like mirrors, beam splitters, and so we will we will understand the physics that we can use this this uh, material, this type of material to manipulate photons and to have. Uh, Processing of quantum information that it is needed in a, for quantum computation. So we we will learn a little bit. I'll show in some slides some examples where we can use, for instance, like building splitters to build like uh, logical gates, like a Hadamard gate, something like this. So, but today I'll just show. I mean, just to have an idea. But the the theory behind we'll see with details during the 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 course after we have this, this prerequisite, uh, prerequisite understanding of the math of the Hilbert space. So, uh, of course, we use photons, now, which are chargeless particles, and in, in general, they do not interact with each other, but we can use like optical materials to mediate this interaction. So we will see this during the course, how to do this how uh, nonlinear optical materials, slabs, uh, can be used to, to, to mediate the interactions between photons and to carry the, the quantum information between one to the other. So other model we will use, the third model is the optical cavity, cavity quantum electrodynamics. So, uh, we will learn how how to quantize the electromagnetic field. This will be important. And uh, this model is important because in a cavity, we can access regimes that involve 
atoms and photons, for instance. So these atoms is related with uh, some modes. Uh, for instance, here is one one of the 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 structure that we one of the devices that we can use is the call like a fabri perro cavity. This is something very simple. I mean, it, it's uh, related with two mirrors. I call here R1, R2, and we have like photons get inside and it bouncing back and forth here uh, in these two mirrors. I mean, part of them are transmitted, part are reflected, and some get uh, get out. And this this the photons that get out, they are they are like the what we could measure in here, our output in a quantum computation. So we will understand this uh, in the, the end of the course, because this is the third model that we treat. So first we will have like the simple model that is the harmonic oscillator. It will be useful to have to, as a base, understand from uh, optical, quantum optical models using photons. And then in the third model, uh, it would be important also here. I mean, we have the this sequence. I mean, first the simple, then the second, and the third more a little bit more complicated. But I mean, it's not really com complicated. We we'll see uh, during during the 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 course. So uh, yeah. So in this case, like. Uh, the, the cavity, like quantum information, can be represented by photons uh, using cavities with atoms that provide interaction between photons. And the idea is that the photons interact with an atom, interact with an atom. That one photon interacts with an atom, and this atom interacts with another photon. And this interaction. Uh, uh, the, the atom mediates the, the, the interaction between the, the two photons, right? So you can like uh, give information one photon to the other using an atom as as mediator. And of course, this this mediation uh, like it introduces additional noise, and we will discuss a little bit about noise, uh, this type of noise too in during the course. So just to, to be more clear here, let me show, let me use if sometimes a, a picture is better than just speaking. So the idea, so I will use during the course when, especially when I'm in the math, I will use a lot like a whiteboard. So, but what I mean here, when I'm saying this here, is like you have like a photon that will gamma it interact with an atom called A and then that is the photon number one and then the atom A the same atom interacts with a photon number two and the information here the, the exchange here they have information the atom, this information can be carried for the second photon. Okay, once photons uh, do not interact with each other, I mean directly, but you can use some some devices to to, to make this interaction. And the, the uh, cavity like that, it, it's important because uh, it can, you can increase uh, this interaction because this uh, bouncing back here of the the photons. So the photons will interact with atoms here inside the uh, cavity. So this atom A will be here. So we see with details, okay, in, 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 during during the course. I mean, this is just a just a previous uh, idea. So let's go back to presentation. 
Okay, so if you guys have some questions, you can, I mean, you can stop me. There's no problem. I'm planning like about one hour presentation, but. Okay, no question? Uh, no, so far, no questions. No questions, yeah. Okay. So, so this is the model we are using, these three models that we will talk in this, during this course. Uh, but we will discuss uh, uh, another things, like uh, how quantum information processing machines can be really realized in nature. So we you use these models, but how this could be done? I mean, how? What is a qubit? What is a logical gate? I mean, physically, uh, how you you can uh, manage these in in, 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 in real in real in real world in real life? So we everyone knows that experimental realization of quantum circuits algorithms uh, are extremely challenging. So we'll dis in this course, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about uh, physical and math principles uh, that relates to the implementation of these quantum devices in, in this quantum inf the quantum information in real devices. Right? In this case, the, the, the devices, in the first part of the course, the devices we, we, we mentioned um, before, like the the cavity quantum electrodynamic is the quantum optical uh, devices, the harmonic oscillator, and and so on. So, uh, a basic question that we can make is: What are the experimental requirements for requirements for building a quantum computing? So, the first thing mm -hmm. really important is how you can do experimentally. Uh, how you can uh, build qubits, which are the elementary units of the theory. So to realize a quantum computing, we must give qubits a physical representation. So one representation could be like photons or could be a spin of an electron or an atom. Uh, but we see the, de de the details be behind the theory of these things. So that's why it's important like to, to have like some knowledge about quantum, quantum electrodynamics, is like for for instance, like for photons, which are electromagnetic radiation. So it's important the quantum part of the electromagnetic radiation. So it's important to to have this this basic background that we we'll show during during the course. So okay, so the things that we need, we need a system where these qubits can evolve and can like uh, share quantum information between parts of the system. It's like the qubits with logical gates and the uh, and other qubits uh, because we are we're not using only one. So how can you can these things can be can be uh, done in a, in a real device? That's the the main question. So the system the systems in this case is like the the the, the optical ca cavity, for instance, that we that we will discuss, and then the other devices, I mean, like uh, ion traps and so on. So the system is this: so the qubits can evolve as desired during the process. The preparation of initial states. Are important. So, how we prepare qubits initially to once to you share information during the during the uh, the process. I mean, the the qubits are involving. So, how they share information is an important thing. So, but to do this, we need to initially know the initial states of these qubits. And the measurement, how you can measure the uh, the final output of the system. So how you can so these three steps are important: right? initial state, the system that's the development where the the the, the qubits will involve. 
So what, what we use in the system, we use like mean splitters, we use like phase shifters and etc. And what's the physics and the math that we use, the theory behind that? That's the, 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 the main question, the basic questions that we, we, we try to, uh, to solve during, during the course. So, yeah, and we know that this, to do these things, uh, it's extremely challenging. Next experimental realizations, we will just talk a little bit because we're not, of course, we will not do experiments here, but we will talk a little bit. The experimental realization of these requirements, not always is possible. For instance, like the harmonic oscillator, that is the, the first example we will use, we see that uh, the theory is, is, is beautiful, but we can't like, um, we can't uh, really do the, the, all the things, all the requirements necessary to have like a process of quantum information. So we have a, a quantum, quantum computing for, for this model, right? but the other models uh, uh, we, we, we discuss, and we will see that uh, the requirements are, are better. So, so, and so examples that we can use like qubits. I mean, I, one example is uh, nuclear, nuclear spin uh, can be a very good qubit because superpositions of being aligned with or against a magnetic field, external magnetic field can last for a long time. I will show in the end of this, of this, this lecture today, uh, one example of this. We will use like uh, a very famous uh, experiment in quantum mechanics that is the Stan Gerlach experiment, where we can use the notion of qubits uh, to explain the the results they, that the guys find. I mean, the the the, the experiment Stan Gerlach experiment was uh, done in the twenties. So of course, uh, the idea of qubits at that time it did not uh, exist, but I mean, we can use today to explain the, the results of the, that experiment. So we, we will discuss a little bit about this in, in the end of this the lecture today. And this will, we, will, we will have like in, in hands, like uh, it's a physical realization of a qubit. I mean, a qubit really exists can be done in nature, I mean, in, a, in a device. So we will need, we will use like uh, the spin, the spin of the of, of the atoms. So, uh, but it can uh, difficult can be difficult to build a quantum computer from nuclear spins because in general the coupling with the world is so small that it's hard to measure the orientation of a single nuclei. Okay, so. These are the things that we'll discuss during, during the course with more, more details. So another example is that we mentioned before is the harmonic oscillator. So we will understand th this is a simple harmonic oscillator with a potential, a parabolic potential well. And in this here, we show like the probability amplitudes for different energy levels. So each energy is related, is quantizing. I mean, they have, have uh, numbers like zero, one, two, three, four, not uh, levels in between. And we, when we start really talking about uh, the models related with among the harmonic oscillator, we see that the qubits uh, in this example could be represented for these energy levels. And we try to, we will try to build some, some, like some logical gates using these qubits. Okay, I mean, not today because we still, as I, as I said, we still need some background, mathematical background that we'll see before. And before we really start like uh, talking about the, the quantum computing models. But um, 
yeah so this is the the energy levels from the from the comp the, the the case of the amount oscillator because let me write something here stop a little bit here and use these other so Oops. Yeah, here. So the when we will quantize the so this is the uh, simple harmonic oscillator. Oops. Simple harmonic oscillator with a potential well that is proportional to x squared, right? So this is the the prob the amplitudes that we find here for different energy levels, where the energy usually depends of n, and is in terms of h bar. Omega is a frequency, n plus one half. Okay. So. So yeah, when we quantize the, the electromagnetic field, and you will see these in details uh, during the course, we have a picture like that, and we'll see that these energy levels we can use like to build our qubits. But we see that these have some problems, but the problems we will need some math details that you see in the future, okay. So, so uh, so so this is the things that we will discuss about the harmonic oscillator. This is the main result, and we will learn how how to to find like this figure and how to bring this for the quantum computing side, right? Because this is a problem very very traditional in physics, quantum mechanics books that everyone that so what that had quantum mechanics courses in the past so how to solve this but we uh, what we want we want to solve this but also see the relation this with the quantum computing okay let's return So, and the other things that we we'll use will be the light polarization. Want to compute and we will see how to make uh, gates use beam splitters. Beam splitters are in general are just uh, experimentally is just a piece of glass which can reflect and transmit fractions of, of light. So we have light come here, or photons. This the uh, my representation of a beam, beam splitter. Light come here and part of the this light is transmitted, part is reflected. And we will if you have like a, a light here that put return here. Okay, so if you call like this uh, A, it is a B. So part of the A here is transmitted, and part will be reflected in this in this way here. And B part is transmitted, and part would be reflected in this way, right? In this way. Okay, so so this is the idea, and oh, what we have, how you can like make gates using this. Uh, for instance, like. Let me go back. Okay, 
So the two inputs and two outputs of this device, I mean, the, the, if I have like photon A and photon B, part of photon A is transmitted, part of photon A is reflected, and the same for the photon B. So the, the beam splitters are related with an equ equation like that, which we, we could like represent in a matrices. And this kind of, of relation, we can have something similar like this. And so if I have here, here is a representation, a schematic representation of an optical beam splitter. And here's like the opposite, which which they they can do like unitary representation. So we understand this. Then this is the B, B splitter. This would be like the emitium B splitter. But uh, let's say here the photon A come in the splitter and part is transmitted in this direction of A, part is reflected in this direction. It's the same for the, the B, the B photon. So if you guys pay attention here, let's focus on this in the, in the left part. This is a beam splitter with uh, this angle theta is pi over four. This is called a 50-50 beam splitter. So 50% is transmitted, 50% is reflected. So you have something like this, and this is similar with a Hadamard gate, which in general in Hadamard gate you have like zero, so you put in superpositions of zero, one, and one superpositions on zero and one, two. So the difference is the sign, plus and minus. So if you think like photon B, like uh, my photon up, so if you call up like zero, and photon A is down, so you think like one. So these are the relation. This could be similar to a to a Hadamard gate. And if you use both, you have like identity because they are B B dagger. We will see when we will discuss the math of quantum mechanics is, is equal to the identity. So and just to be, I don't know if this clear enough, but let me let me write. So, if you see this equation here, we could represent it like a out, like in the matrix representation. That is more familiar. So cos sine minus sine cos and he a in b in okay b so if you have an angle like this it over four, so this is be one half, one half, one half, one half. So this would have something like this: one, one, minus one, one, and this is the same: a in, b in. So this is like a representation for Hadamard. So this is a real device that you could use to make this thing. So. When you are using Python, make your program and send for for a computing, a quantum, real quantum computing. If this is based on optical devices, it probably would be using something like this. I mean, probably would be they have probably a beam splitter. So you see the the theory theory behind it here. I'm just showing basically the result, but you see the theory behind the indicators. This is just to, to have uh, an example. OK. OK, so questions, no? Let me see if I'm too fast. No, I think it's good. Still, still no questions in chat. OK, thank you. So, okay, this is some examples. We'll see more things, more examples of 
logical gates that we can do during the course. So, uh, okay, so in general, what we need in a quantum computer has to be uh, uh, well isolated in order to retain its quantum properties. So these are things that we are always like discussing. All the models that we show, we will say, oh, this this has this, this kind of problem. This must be isolated for this this reason, for this other reason. This is this material or this this type of material is very sensible for this or that, and so on. But at the same time, qubits have to be accessible, of course, and they can be mani manipulated to perform a computation and to read out the results. So we will discuss all these things uh, during during the models that we are treating, and we see in the case of uh, the harmonic oscillator that sometimes this is a problem. So that's why you need something more. But the, again, the harmonic oscillator is important. It's a, a pedagogical point of, point of view to understand better quantum mechanics and to the basics. It's important to to has application in the other models that we will see. So uh, a very fundamental question is this one. Why we believe qubits exist in nature once they are the fundamental element of quantum computation and quantum information? So I'll give today, I mean, one example of qubits. Like I had a mistake here. Typo. So, how do we know that system with properties of qubits exist in nature? That's the 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 main point, the main question. So, I will explain here. I mean, it's the last thing I'll, I'll talk today about this very famous experiment. Indicate that qubits structure was. Uh, really exist in nature, and this experiment was conceived in the 20s. Of course, by that time, uh, the notion of bits or qubits was not discussing yet. I mean, the, the Turing machines is from the 40s, right? So this is before they have some explanation in, in that the, during this time. I mean, the, the quantization, the that they are related, in fact, with the spin of electron that uh, was the conclusion they have. But we will not get in too much details about this today. We will try to see how to explain this this experiment using the qubits notion. Okay. There was a, a few questions came up. Okay. One was more of a comment. Uh, please, could you be more clear in the writing the equations. Okay, my my handwriting, I guess. Yeah. Okay, I'll be. I'll try to do this when I, I'm doing the equations. I mean, really, I need to get used with the the pen. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, uh, it will be when when I'm I'm doing the calculations during the course. I'll I'll try to be more careful. Okay. The second question that. was, what is the dot in the figure of the beam split? Oh, this, yeah, I, I forget to explain. But this is just uh, uh, to tell the orientation. I mean, okay. the, the dot is just to tell the, I think they have here, just to tell the, uh, this part with the negative sign and the plus sign and different. I mean, this is just a, 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 a Schematic view, just to make the difference. I mean, this would be like the bling splitter, and this is the the, the conjugate of the bling splitter. It's okay. just to just to when you see the figure, do in the book uses this, this notation. When you see the figure, you see, you understand. I mean, we'll, okay. we'll, that's the only difference, but it's not the physical thing. And it just the... a schematic thing. Okay. And the third question really cuts to the heart of the matter. How do we know the energy is quantized and not continuous? Oh, this is shown in the experiment. We see uh, in next, not today, 
but today I'll show something. But in the next in the next lecture next Friday, we will discuss a little bit about the history of quantum mechanics and quantum computing. So I think these points will be a bit much clearer. But uh, the experiment show you that it's not continuous. Is this uh, you see in your, your experience like things things like this? Not everything that we suspect classically. Classically, you respect to see things like this. But what you measure, I'll show one in the Stan Gallup example. We will see something related with this. But uh, maybe in next Friday will be much clearer because I'll talk about uh, some experiments, basic basic experiments of quantum mechanics. So. So if, if today is not clear the answer, maybe in the next, don't lose next Friday presentation. Okay, more, more, more questions? Uh, that was it for now, thank you. Okay, okay so, so, okay, let's talk a little bit about this experiment. Uh, in the ori original, that, so the Stan Gallup experiment, that, that was uh, uh, conceived in the 20s. In the original experiment, uh, hot atoms were being from the oven through a magnetic field. And this field causes the atom to be deflected. And then the position of each atom was recorded. J was measured. So the, the, this is the uh, schematic view of the experiment. So you guys have like here a type of oven and they in the original Stan Gallup experiment they use like silver atoms but then they realize that the the things much much simple if you use like hydrogen atoms because they are simple but the idea is they the send the atoms here and they pass from this this type of apparatus here which has a magnetic field in a homogeneous magnetic field and classically it was expected that to measure something like this continuous which is which is related with the the angular the magnetic momentum of the 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 the, the atoms so they expected to measure something that was in between like let's say minus and mi mi minus and plus the the the, the modulus of the, the proportional to minus or plus the, the the modulus of the the magnetic moment. So classically the classical electrodynamics will show you that this would be the right mission. So but what they observed was something not continuous, but not in between, let's say, the plus and minus mod. The, I think it's better to write here. They expected to, to find oops, What Stern in Gallag expected to find because it was the what the classical theory said. So they expected to find something like some reason. I don't know what happened. But they're expecting to find something like continuous. That this is something between, uh, let's say that the magnetic moment is called mu. 
So this is the magnetic moment. So I expected to find something in between. But what the measure was something like this. Not this. But something like this. Plus mu minus mu. Something con not continuous but quantized. So that we can see here in this representation. I think this one is better. Okay, so this is the expectation in the classical theory, the classical electrodynamics, but this was what the mission. So something like this. Which is proportional to the, to the magnetic moment. Okay, so in this case, uh, the only two orientations of the magnetic moment manifest themselves. So they did not, uh, let's say here, span the entire range. Okay, like what is expected in the classical part. Okay, so but we will discuss a little bit next week more details from this experiment. Now I want to, I mean, the conclusions they get in the that time, because as I told you, as you guys know, I mean, this is, was done in the 20s. And we have an explanation from qubits for, from, from this experiment. So the, 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 so let's represent this, 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 uh, this figure here. A you know, schematic representation like this. So we have the oven here, and this is what I'm calling SGZ is this guy here. Okay, so it's my Stan Gallup experiment. This magnetic magnetic stuff here, but it is oriented in the Z direction. Okay. So it is oriented in the Z direction, and I already know because we know the results that they find. I mean, this is experimental results they find is like this. So I have an up and a down, uh, up and down uh, results, I mean, orientation. So, but what I'm doing here, I will block the down, okay? I'll block the down. So the down, what I'm calling here, here SZ minus component, it will block. And SZ plus, I'll let go through another SG experiment. I mean, so I'll have sequential of Stan Gallup experiments. So this one here on the left is the representation from this guy here. And this other here in the right is the same guy and also oriented in the z direction. Okay, and I block here the down part. So SZ minus is down once it cannot go through the second uh, Stan Gallup apparatus. So what happened here when this guy come here, the up part come? The, the atoms with up spin, what they what do, they pass from the second Stan Gallup apparatus, and then when I, we measure, we measure only uh, up part, I mean, atoms with spin up, okay? And no atoms with spin down. This is no surprise, okay, because the atoms with, with spin down is blocked here. So the result is okay, yeah, no problem. But the more interesting thing we will see, uh, instead using this Stan Gallup 
uh, apparatus here oriented with the magnetic field oriented in the z direction that's oriented it now in the x direction okay so till here is the same thing so the oven the atoms comes and we have the stern gallag apparatus orient with the magnetic field oriented in the z direction i block the atoms with, with spin down i let only the atoms with spin up goes through but the second apparatus instead is the magnetic field is oriented in the z direction it, it will be oriented in the x direction now and when i measure i will measure uh, atoms uh, with spin up in the x direction and up in atoms with spin down in the x direction so up and down will appear again but now with uh, a different direction right because i'm using like uh, a different orientation here for the magnetic field so what would the what the results say here is 50 percent of the atoms in the sc plus with is the atom with, with spin up in the z direction coming out in from the first apparatus and is characterized by this this couple here so i have sz plus up in this direction sz s x plus that's up in the x direction together so 50 percent so it seems 50 percent of these atoms is has 50 percent uh the atoms here has 50 percent of uh s x plus and the atoms here and also has 50 percent of the s x minus so 50 percent up and 50 percent down in the x direction okay so this is the measure this was measure and this is one possible explanation for this result so but let's do a third experiment so a third experiment we will have again till here is the same thing so the second it's here is the same thing so i have the oven the atoms comes we have this 10 gallon apparatus with the magnetic field oriented in the z direction i block the atoms with spin down in the z direction I let the, the atoms with, with spin up pass. And then the second Stan Gallag experiment is oriented in the x direction, the magnetic field oriented in the x direction. But now I will block because I know this result. I have I know that have the two are possibles. So I'll block here again the down, but the, the down in the x direction. And I let only the, the atoms in the in the up in x go through the third and um, now the third stand gallup experiment which again i will put in the oriented in the z direction okay and the result is this i measure the beans in the with spin up in the z direction but surprisingly i will also measure uh with spins down in the z direction surprisingly because i have blocked all the downs here in the first experiment and then it appears here again so i don't know you guys but every time i see this this i read about these things my i feel like my 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 head like is, is going like upside down <laughs> because how is I expected that only this guy here would be measured be uh, atoms with spin up but not atoms with spin down once they was blocked here but uh, surprisingly it appears here and an explanation of this is we we can use the idea of qubits we can explain this the, uh, from qubits in this would we would have like a real experiment that say that well qubits really exist in nature 
this the qubits that we uh, used to 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 discuss because the explanation is the, the following like uh if you define sz plus the atoms with orientation with spin oriented in the up direction in the z in, 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 when, when the magnetic field is oriented in the in the z direction we could call this from zero my state zero my qubit zero and the down i could call them the minus no the, the one sorry so the the atoms down the guys here i could call them one so this is zero this is one and when i have the second what i'm call, calling here x plus and x minus would have some uh some superpositions of zeros in one in fact which then explain why in the third explain why in the third i can measure the 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 minus again I mean, the minus appears because when i do this i have a superposition so here i'm measured in the what we call like computational basis that's why in the first original experiment uh, the original experiment, which is this one, I have here up and down, or you can call zero and one. In this one, when I block the 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 the, the down, when I block one, I can measure only zero in the computational basis, because the ones was like blocked. When I'm do this, and I uh, again I can. Uh, make the second exper the experiment in, but now with the magnetic field uh, oriented in the x direction i can have this here up and down again uh, but in the x direction this is because i'm measured in the in this basis in the x basis sometimes we call this uh plus basis and this is the minus basis okay so that's why appears the two and in the third when I do this, I return to the computational basis, 0, 1. And that's why the 1 appears again. Because, in fact, when I do this 2, I, it's like I put in superposition the, the up and down. When I, do, when I oriented the magnetic field in the first experiment in the z direction and in the second in the x direction, what I did was put a superposition the 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 spin of the, the the atoms. So this is an example where I illustrate the 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 existence which can explain this 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 experiment uh, using the idea of qubits. And this illustrates that uh, qubits can be really like observable and can be believable in, in nature. So this is an example using like the the the, the atoms, the, the spin of atoms. But we can see we, we will discuss a lot uh, a lot during the course using photons too. It will be really important. So I mean, if you guys have questions, because I think this is the last thing I have to do. He is coming next in the course. I mean, the next Friday, I will talk a little bit I, because I think it's important we, we get the context more, with more details about other experiments of quantum mechanics and quantum computation. And then in the, probably in the other Friday, we will talk, we will start the math and talk about the mathematical through tools of quantum mechanics the math, math, mathematical that would be necessary. I mean, as I told you before, you don't need to have to know everything in what uh, a quantum mechanics book have, but at least the mathematical things that I think you should be important we, we to have. And I think Bumblehead will talk a little bit about this in the end. And then I'll talk uh, also about the postulates of quantum mechanics, and then we will start uh, uh, 
discussing and try to understanding all these models with these some details, more details. I mean, and I'll start do, doing the math and show you guys uh, the things the, the the things necessary to to understand. I mean, today was just like a general idea because I think it's important. We still have everybody that follow the course have this, especially this part here. That I'm not sure that every, everyone I mean, understand well this part and it will be, be really important. So I think this is enough for today. I have one hour. I have one hour. So I don't know if Bumble Day is online. Not. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, Bom, yeah. if you want to yeah. talk a little bit about the math, 